Last week, we took a look at some interesting data from top eights in the last year that included five out of the six members of the top six, looking at things such as character diversity, reverse 3-0s, and four stocks. If you haven't checked out that video yet, click in the top right hand corner to watch it first. It's not a prerequisite for this video, but I bring it up because at the end, I ask for any more questions that you guys would want me to take a look at in the data set, which we're going to jump into right now. First off, we have a suggestion from Philip to take a look at average stocks left when a player wins in top 8. So interestingly enough, we have SFAT, Axe, and Chudat at the top of the average stocks remaining when a player wins a game. The explanation for SFAT and Axe is that these players usually do not take games off of players ranked above them, but they rarely lose to players below them, especially in top 8, so they aren't going to have a lot of close 1 stocks against players like Leffen that Hungrybox does. Chudat is also slightly affected, but his high rank mainly has to do with the nature of Ice Climbers in the metagame, where Icy's players often either get completely blown out by a player who understands the matchup, or they run over a player who doesn't completely understand how to beat Icy's. A better metric to look at that gives us more useful information is average stocks remaining in both wins and losses. This metric gives us a rough idea of how often a player will handedly win a set in top 8, so it shouldn't surprise anyone seeing Hungrybox and Armada at the top of the list. Plop and Mutagame being so far down on the list is a bit harder to explain, however. A potential explanation is that the two are generally seated to play Hungrybox or Armada on winner's side, which brings down their average a bit, whereas Mango often is coming through loser's side, so he plays worse players which helps inflate his average slightly above those two. We can also see a lot of players who are commonly seen in top 8s alongside the top 6, like SFAT, Axe, and Wizzy, all with about the same average stocks remaining. The fact that Chudat's high placement on the ranking carries over on this chart is interesting as well, and it's actually a single game that's causing it. The game in reference is his 4 stock over Mewtwo King, which, when removed from the dataset, jumps him all the way down to 3rd worst and helps Mewtwo King's average stocks remaining a bit. This single game weighs on Chu so much because it's a huge outlier from a typical game for him, and because he's only played 25 total games in top 8. This amount of games may seem fairly small, but it puts him on about the same tier as other players around his current skill level. Next up we have a question from SSBM Kumi asking about player diversity in Grand Finals. The data behind this is fairly straightforward, with Hungrybox and Armada only missing Grand Finals at 3 of the events they each attended, giving them a 72% and 62% appearance in Grand Finals rates respectively. These two players, meaning head to head in Grand Finals, happen at 4 out of these 11 events, making it the most common, with Armada vs Mango and Hungrybox vs Plup tied for second most common at 2 each. And Super Smash Con is the only one of these events where neither Armada nor Hungrybox appeared in Grand Finals, which was aided by Armada's lack of attendance here. Beyond that, there's not really much to discuss about this data, as it's really only just quantifying the level of domination that Armada and Hungrybox have had over the highest level of melee, which is something any casual fan of the game could tell you. And lastly, we have one more question from I Am Me about the best and worst stages for all characters. I'd love to give a more in-depth answer to this question, but for pretty much every character besides Fox, we have a pretty small dataset. Fox is the only character in the dataset who has played at least 10 games on all 6 of the legal stages in Top 8, with even Jigglypuff missing out by not having enough games on Fountain. So with that understood, let's look at Fox's data. The only two stages that Fox holds a winning record on are Pokemon Stadium and Fountain of Dreams. Pokemon Stadium is pretty easy to explain, as it is Fox's best stage in a handful of matchups thanks to its room to move combined with its low ceiling, but Fountain of Dreams is a bit confusing. A lot of players tend to not like the stage because of its randomly moving platforms, causing players to constantly tweak their moves to keep combos going. Fox and other characters who like the shuffle aerials especially are affected by this because their options can be severely limited by where they are on the stage and the current arrangement of the platforms. But somehow, it's still Fox's second best stage despite all this. And when we take away games played against Puff, Found actually becomes Fox's best stage. So what's causing these stats that are way against conventional wisdom? First I thought it may have to do with when in the set Fountain is picked, and there really wasn't any crazy trends within that data. Then I thought about Mango's 9-0 record on the stage, and took him out of the Fox win rate calculation, which does set the stage for a more conventional order, but doing it doesn't completely answer the question. For that, we have to take a look at the player matchups for wins and losses. Here we can see the general trend of Fox being counterpicked to the stage when there is a significant skill gap between the two players. Then, when looking at losses, we see Fox generally loses here when the players are around the same skill level. With that out of the way, the rest of the chart fills out as one would expect. 
with Yoshi's being strong for its low ceilings like Stadium, FD and Battlefield being around the same level, and Dreamland being at the bottom largely due to it being Hungrybox's number one counterpick stage in the matchup. And that's about it for this video, but before I address a couple more comments, I want to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Molino. They currently have a sale on their website where you're able to get a high quality gaming mouse for just the price of shipping and handling. That's perfect for when you're playing games besides Melee on the beefy computer setup that you just had to buy the Play Net Play. Also, if you're in the market for a new pair of earbuds, they've got the same deal going on for a pair of those as well. If you're interested in either of these products, check out the links in the description. And with that out of the way, that's about it for this video. You've heard me plug all my websites a hundred times, so I'm not going to go over my Twitter, my Twitch, my Patreon. If you want to check that out and you're interested, check out the links in the description below. But let me talk about Patreon for a little bit more because I haven't done it in a while. I really want to thank my uh, three Patreon subscribers, Nick Fade and Nathan Simon, for being around for five months. That's so amazing. I never thought when I started this I would have, well, I didn't think I'd have anyone supporting me on Patreon, but having someone stick around for five months, I really appreciate it. I know, I don't know if you have anything that I could promote for you, Nathan, but I know Nick streams a lot. Nick streams a whole lot, so if you're interested in a very consistent Melee streamer, look up Nick Fade on Twitch and you'll you'll see him out. And also, I'd love to give a thanks to Daniel Gilbert, the newest addition to the Patreon squad. He just came in last month, and I'm really glad to have you uh, I hope you enjoy the benefits and I'm this shout out is good enough along with getting to pick the videos and all that jazz But if you want to know more about the patreon benefits you can see them down below But I haven't talked about my patreon subscribers in a while, so I thought I'd give them a new shout out And also I would like to thank am am I never can pronounce his full name Ambi am minister um, For the helping out with the Fox portion of this video He just put out a recent video about some wild getting Fox stuck in reflector So you can punish him by like shooting a laser at the Fox reflector so he gets stuck in shine It's it's absolutely crazy. I'll probably show like a little clip of it here Ambi is a really he's he's on I want to say he's on the rise He's been playing for a while, but he's a really good Fox player plays green Fox You should go check out his YouTube channel. It'll be among the tons of links in the description, but Hopefully I can put like the little thing in the top where you can go directly to his video, but that new video, short little video on that wild fox tech is really interesting and you should check that out as well. And like I said, I was going to talk about some comments earlier. Uh, there's one comment that I'll bring up now from Bones, I think he's a local Philly player, but um, where he talked on, instead of covering like a ton of stats very briefly, he'd prefer if I... Um, would take like one thing and cover it for an entire video and I think I'm gonna move at least for the stats video more to that style because I really enjoy being able to take a deep dive on one thing and I feel like that'll also be good for you guys so you'll get like instead of getting like last week where you got one seven minute video you would probably get like two four minute videos or no it would be no more like two five or six minute videos something like that but if i do stats in the future and i do have one really interesting idea but i need to collect more data for it that i want to try out and also beyond bones's comment there's a lot of general comments saying that some people really like the stats video some people really like the story video some people like both i hear you guys loud and clear and i'm going to keep the variety up as much as possible next week we should have a rising player spotlight on a philly player not bones but uh uh, probably, yeah, by and far the best player in Philly. You should probably know who that is. He had a great recent performance at Genesis 5, but that's all I'm going to tell you. And I think that's about it. Ivan Saves Untitled. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this wrap-up wasn't a little bit too long, but I wanted to address your comments and give the uh, accurate shout-outs that I need to. And I will see you guys next time.